welcome to a talk back from Mortals Phoenix Rising, sponsored by Ubisoft. I'm your host, Nick, Nick Boy Richardson, and I am joined by... Uh, Gooseus. The legendary, uh, the legend of hair stuff. Very nice. I like that. I, for, for a second there, I thought you'd actually forgotten your name. And I'm like, no, <laughs> he's, he's broken. He's broken. How do I Greek mythify it? And of course, uh, joining me? Well, I was going to try and Greekify my name, but my name is actually Greek. Stephanie. Persephone. Like, Can like, we say like, per, like Persephone. Ah. Uh, like <laughs> Stephanie. Steph- I will accept. Yes. Uh, well, what's the, is there one for Peter as well? Per- Peteus. 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 And the rock. <laughs> I think N- Nicholas. Nicholas, right? Is this racist? This Nic- racist. Nicholas sounds. I, f- I feel like that's Russian. Isn't that Nikolai? Oh yeah. Nikola. Yeah. Mm. I feel. Uh, uh, if you if you just if you took out the C, then it's just and. It, I don't even know how to spell my own name because I was like, then, I could, then it would just be the K, and I was like, "There's no K in Nicholas." You just put an E at the end of it, so you're Nicolas. Nico- Nico- this Nic- is off, yeah. to a terrible start. Oh, I think it's good. Uh, we are here to talk about Immortals: Phoenix Rising because we got hands on with the game sort of mid last week, mm-hmm. and uh, there's been some uh, the, some chat about it online, and uh, we wanted to sit down and, and have a bit of a chat about it ourselves. We got a bunch of questions from you guys about the game and sort of structured tonight around those and then obviously in the chat there's uh there's the opportunity for you to join in as well but uh i just wanted to check before we start gus said you're running a, you're running a little hot right now and i am worried about you uh, it's all right i'm just i'm a little warm so it's quite stuffy in here so i've got a cool drink with me and i'm gonna keep my calm and cool all night tonight so don't worry and also the chat love your new haircut thank you look at that fresh I got, fade i got it trimmed hard on the side so that the headphones could sit nicely over it. That's, oh, that's a good move. A we're functional bro- haircut. We're broadcasting out of a different software tonight. We're not using OBS anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a great piece of software that we're using. But there's a, a slightly larger audio delay in my foldback. Oh, no. So now I'm, I'm going to start to speak oh. like this as I hear myself. <laughs> my I don't, I'm not going to wear headphones anyway. But you won't stutter. <laughs> So I won't move. stutter. That's good. Oh, um, also, obviously, uh, tonight we're going to have a chat about um, our impressions of the game, and then we are going to play a playback. Is yes. Correct. Yes. We've all played the game, but the only people who really matter on this show are Steph and I. Yep. And so we recorded our playing of that. Is it, Pete, Pete agrees with that, but that one hurt Gus. <laughs> <laughs> only that we, when they were finished playing with it, were like, you can have a go now. Like, just walked away from the... Co- you went to do that thing where we ran over and picked the controller up and said, yeah. there's still half an hour. We can play a little bit of it. So. My favourite thing that regularly happens on this show <laughs> that is <laughs> so telling is when Gus says, Pete, give me my single and then yeah, yeah. realises that he doesn't and never will have a single. Oh, come on. Yeah. And never will. Ouch. That was the dagger. Ow. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, uh, this has been slain. <laughs> Uh, well, let's get into the Greek talk. Before we do, uh, Kit Carnage says, Nicholas, 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 or Nicholas, which are five different spellings of Nicholas, but you don't really hear it when it's pronounced, is a male given name derived from the Greek name Nicholas, understood to mean victory of the people, being a compound of victory and people, which makes sense. There you go. Victory of the people. I've always thought of you as a compound. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I've always thought of you as a Nicholas. So. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because I think of myself more as a Nicholas. Uh, yeah, you, do, you would think that. <laughs> All right, we're done with the name jokes. Let's jump on to a name uh, that you've heard a lot on this show, and it's Loki Cat wrote in with the first question, which I feel like springs off very nicely here. What is Immortals Phoenix Rising? Um, and uh, I think I'll, I'll kick us off with this. So we saw in the Ubisoft Forward last week, uh, it used to be Gods and Monsters, but uh, Phoenix Rising is basically, let's just get it out early. It's Breath of the Wild, Ubisoft version. Um, it's a Greek uh, open world RPG uh, sort of fantasy game, uh, lots of exploring, lots of upgrades of powers. You play as Phoenix, who's a warrior who was sent to save the Greek gods uh, from Typhon, mm-hmm. who I did not know is a person. One of the great Titans, actually. Oh, really? Because mm-hmm. there's a number of Titans. I did classical studies in year seven. Oh, wow. I watched uh, Clash of the Titans on a plane, so I'm also up. <laughs> I recently watched Hercules, the Disney version. <laughs> so we've all done our research. Uh, 
the uh, so Typhon is a is a, a big creature who stole the gods' powers in this game, and so basically the whole game you're wandering around fighting uh, to free gods, and then in return they give you their powers, which I think is how it works in real life. I think if we came across a god and you save them, you then get bestowed upon with their powers? Does that mean you, they lose their powers or they just make no, a duplicate? Just, because they're always doing that. They're always bestowing their powers upon people, but they're not giving them up. I think that's how it works, but I think gods are notoriously shifty. Oh, yeah. mm. And there's always kind of uh, tricks and pranks going on, so I wouldn't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, in, this, in this instance, though, Phoenix, uh, who is the central character in this game, um, is doing a, a, a solid for the gods, so we yeah. can um, assume that the Phoenix, uh, that Phoenix will be able to keep these powers. And, and like a cool mechanic to go, let's take all of these gods, who are all, always in Greek mythology, having a little rows and having a little, uh, you know, back and forth with each other. They're pairing up, they're teaming <laughs> up, they're sleeping <laughs> with each other, they're hating, each, they're killing each other. And in this case, it's being used mechanically in a really interesting way that's like, Hey, they've all been um, scattered to the mm. winds, and it's your job now to go and rescue all the. I'm sure they'll be they'll be bickering, they'll be sass between all of the gods, and it's your job to babysit them all. Kind yeah, of. yeah. What I like about this too is that it's the same Ubisoft studio that uh, that did Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which uh, makes me happy because I imagine that the R and D, like the research and development for uh, those games, must be like one of the funnest parts about making a game yeah. is going in just like really immersing yourself in the culture and the history and making this incredibly cool historic accurate game but they must have just you know dove deep into the mythology and perhaps weren't, weren't able to use that as fully as they were in Assassin's Creed o Odyssey and this was such a great outlet for all of the like myth and magic and gods. I and think stuff. I read one of the devs saying like they had so much leftover material from all a lot of mm. the um, a mm. lot of the trips that they went on obviously when they went over to areas of Greece to do sort of location scouting and sort of get you know influences from that kind of stuff they just they were over there pulling back so much material that they thought like it would just be so much fun to pour this into something a little more stylized like we're seeing with this game. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know that they didn't go back and do more R&D. <laughs> <laughs> they went back to Mykonos. <laughs> we just need to double check that the sand was as white on those beaches. <laughs> so uh, we could just do another company trip. Yeah, the, the, the photos that we had printed, they're faded now. I can't tell what we... <laughs> uh, and then, so the part of the game that we got hands on with uh, is he Hestophus. His, his Hef Hephaestus. Hephaestus. Thank you very much. <laughs> Think of Mephisto from uh, the Adams family. That's, now I'm just that, thinking that is, That's not helpful. <laughs> what, I, I, like, I'm not doing a bit right now. I no, literally that's cannot Festo. remember the and name Mef that I'm supposed to say. Hephaestus. Hephaestus. It was set in the area that has Hephaestus's, Hephaestus's uh, forge. Look, this is, Festus? this is who I am, okay? <laughs> Respect the tongue. It doesn't work. Uh, okay, think about, think about it as her yep. and then Festus. Oh, okay. Hephaestus. Mm. There you go. It's set in the area with Hephaestus's forge uh, and we got to sort of run around in this so this seemed to be the part that all the press got hands on with uh, so vertical slicey and uh, and then the the cool thing that I did like about it as well is it's narrated by Zeus and Prometheus so you get kind of like uh, they're kind of trolling you most of the time they were I think uh, I think that might have been uh, just for this demo but I'm sure it's a, uh, that was a they had a proper VO of them talking through the demo but I imagine that's something they're going to use for the full game as well in some capacity to have yeah. them yeah. classically narrating but I think it's Zeus and um, and Prometheus. Who yeah, I believe they, they had written some dialogue specifically for this demo. Yeah. Um, because it was very self-referential. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, the the mechanic of it, I think, would be part of it. No, 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 no. I, I want to see how long no. she can hold the indignation. Yeah. I'm just saying, I have lots of stuff to say about Of course, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. This is in your realm. Go yeah. for it. Uh, well, I'll kick you off then, because we should move into the story. Chaotic Owl wants to know about the story. Uh, how accurate is the Greek, my Greek mythology? Are they just using correct names? Do in-game characters make the original stories. Let's kick us off with you, Classical Studies Girl, mm. <laughs> story characters world. Yes, so uh, so I really love it, the, the approach they've taken with this game. So first of all, um, looking at the central character, Phoenix, who is a Greek warrior who washes up on the mysterious Golden Isle where the game takes place. Uh, you can, I, I should note as well that you can customize a Phoenix to be male or female and, you know, lots of different customization options in terms of skin color and how they look and all that kind of stuff. Which we couldn't in this. We couldn't in this, yeah. yes, but um, but you can uh, when you play the game. Um, and uh, yeah, so Phoenix washes up on the island and is greeted by Hermes, who is the messenger god. 
little wings on his shoes. Mm. You right here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Hermes uh, informs Phoenix that um, that Typhon has, you know, gone rampage, uh, gone rampant. Uh, the gods are in danger, getting taken out. Um, and uh, there is a prophecy that Phoenix is going to uh, save them all. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. Um, prophecies are great. Uh, <laughs> I cannot tell you how wide and white your eyes are. <laughs> I love myths. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, what, you was, what you were talking about, the whole thing being n- narrated by Prometheus, mm-hmm. um, who was one of the other great titans. So Typhon is one of the, one of the most sort of deadliest titans. Prometheus was a titan that um, is like... I suppose notorious for the creation of like humanity. He was the one that was really pushing for humans to have fire. Yes, no, um, you didn't they everything. So, uh, so they they had fire. Goose took it. Uh, Goose, <laughs> please, Goose, please. <laughs> Zeus took it away from them <laughs> as a punishment because uh, Prometheus, who's like a bit of a trickster, performed a trick on. This is such a sidetrack thing. Um, and then Prometheus stole it back and gave it to uh, um, the humans again. <laughs> and then and then um, Zeus punished them once more and then uh, punished Prometheus uh, by chaining him to the rock and then yeah. sending an eagle to peck out his liver which renewed every night oh, horrible God. torture and so so then anyway so they, they have a complex relationship zeus and prometheus and so <laughs> is, is prometheus sort of blamed for ruining the world by sort of he's, he's blamed for humanity. ruining the world for yeah for, for for encouraging humanity but also i think it was zeus who sent um pandora to earth as well again as another like F you guys. And she brought down a box uh, and everyone was like, don't look in that. Yeah. And we all did. Yeah. Anyway. I feel like you don't know Pandora's the story. Box. You just know the concept of Pandora's box. <laughs> yeah, just Raiders of the Lost yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> sure Pandora's across it. Sorry, Steph. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, so yeah. So, so Zeus and Prom- Prometheus have a complex relationship, but Prometheus is basically narrating the story to Zeus, who isn't kind of taking it seriously. And so throughout the game, there's kind of like wisecracks between mm-hmm. them as Prometheus is trying to... Um, basically, it's almost like, uh, like a commentary as you you're playing through the story yeah. from from these two characters, which is really cool and provides a really unique setting, I think, um, for the game. Can I add a little note here that Blue Ninja Pi said before that so this is Assassin's Creed Odyssey for kids, based on the conversations between Zeus and Prometheus. It is not Assassin's Creed for kids. No, it's not. <laughs> Still there's very a, adult. There's a lot of sass in there, a lot of yeah. drinking, a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. insinuating things. Very playful. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically as you progress through the game, you'll you'll sort of uh, earn blessings from the gods and powers and things as you kind of become like more uh, powerful and skilled throughout the game and all of the weapons and the um, the, the items in the game are all linked to famous uh, characters from mm-hmm. Greek mythology, uh, including the wings of Daedalus. Daedalus was Icarus's father. Oh. So Daedalus was the architect that created the wings for Icarus, which for some reason he decided to f- affix them with wax. What else did they have? What, yeah, back then. Like, what, what do you, they don't have? They don't have super glue. I know, but like, what did you think was going to happen anyway? Strap it to Icarus, the lad. Icarus, Icarus flew too close to the sun. And his dad, who made that famous line, <laughs> "What did you think was going to happen?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, Icarus, come on! Um, did he die? He might have. He died. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's um, all of the characters that you meet and all the items that you encounter. Everything is very firmly grounded in Greek mythology. So there's all of that, um, even though it, it's kind of uh, approached with a very like fantastical, mm. um, uh, you know, animated mm. lens. It's all, all of the the lore is very much grounded in classical Greek mythology. So if you're a Greek mythology nerd, I think you're going to have a really good time. Yeah. Because the difference, uh, at least from the small bit that we played, it was that because because like like we spoke about, they came up Odyssey. It's like oh, you're going back to the same well again, which you could argue yes, they are. But this seems to have that more playful because like Greek myths, Norse myths are full of tricksters and mischief and that sort of thing. So and they're, they're playing... just very weird. Mm. They're, That's they are why very they're weird. so great. They're and so very they're playing weird. heavily into the weirdness and the lightness in this one more than in Assassin's Creed where it feels like they're taking a more... Uh, 
not even classical, but sort of, I guess, drier or, or grounded approach to yeah. it. Yeah, like, that's more from the perspective of the people, and this is more from the perspective of literally the, the gods. Definitely, I love how Steph, yeah. you said, like, that it's firmly grounded in Greek mythology. Like, nothing here is grounded in sensibility. Like, it's all <laughs> kind of absolutely up in the air, crazy, stylized, mythical powers. Like, it's all been ratcheted up uh, to a serious degree. But what a, like, a wonderful kind of reference point to have that it's not a, a game having to go I need to make monsters here and I need to make robots here and I need to make a big bad and a good like being able to pull all these characters and not just in name but in like at personalities and stuff you get so much more sort of like yeah flavor and characters well even when you look at the world design I saw someone um, online liken the island to a theme park and it does really Someone's look like that you know all of the different areas that you visit kind of look like oh this is like this world and this is kind of this zone and um, you know you can kind of see large landmarks mm. you know when you're when you have that kind of verticality to, to, to look down over everything to get that real sense of like here's my giant playground to kind of explore all of this Greek mythology fantasticalness in and I think that's so great and from my understanding I think those areas are themed after certain uh, particular gods so there is uh, who's the really saucy one the like romance. Aphrodite Aphrodite has like <laughs> lots of what she was famously the really saucy one. Saucy. She was it's the awful. goddess of love. Yeah. And her area is like <laughs> lagoons and, uh, you know, fresh growing meadows and like, you know, saucy stuff. The saucy stuff. <laughs> was, she, was she like the god of fertility as well? Like, so, so yeah. it doesn't just mean like she was also uh, like... Probably. I would, say d I, would say I would say Dionysus was the saucy one because he was right. Di Dionysus, Dionysus. Uh, you know. Dionysus? <laughs> yeah. well, I was going to say tomato, tomato, but like Dionysus? I, I, don't know I actually don't know. Um, but he was the god of wine. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. Uh, and I feel like he was the saucy one. Literally yeah, that is saucy. actually... Yeah. <laughs> but you're right. Like, that's a really nice way to then theme those areas, especially in an open world where you can be like, it's also used for just orienteering yourself. But... Um, yeah, at the same time, it's like, it's a nice change up for different... As yeah. you progress throughout. Mm. And like, we, yeah, we saw we were in one zone... Apparently there are seven zones, mm. all themed, like, uh, for sauciness, of different levels of sauciness. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, this was quite big. It was, like, it, it was everything you could look at you could get to, it felt like, at yeah. least. Mm. And, um, and, yeah, like, it, it didn't feel like you exhausted an area in, in the kind of two-hour play session. It was like, there's actually a chunk to do in each of those zones. Yeah, yeah but there's, there's like also this um, the whole of the gods acts as the hub zone as well. So you do have a kind of base that you can go back to and, um, and I believe, um, get swole, Gus, which is something you know all about now. Hey. <laughs> oh, lifting those, like, clockwork dumbbells and... Uh, getting my Zeus hammer on. It's why you're running so hot right now. That is. That is 100% why. <laughs> um, yeah, the uh, with the, like we said before, this was the only island that we got to see. I hope that, like, uh, the way that you get to the other islands or, like, like uh, if they're connected... Well, it's part of one island. Yeah, yeah, there's sorry. There's zones. zones. Island, yeah. That there's some sort of, like, cool bleed over thing where it's not just, like, this hard line where you just cross <laughs> yeah. and it's, like, like the one god's, like, you can't walk past this tree. <laughs> like, this is, I decorate my area like this. Yeah. You decorate your half of the room. You, uh, want, you want Dark Souls 1, not Dark Souls 2. And that's exactly, <laughs> yeah. thank you very much. Thank you for bringing it back to something I truly understand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, yeah, this was, I, I was a little disappointed that this was the only place that we got to see because, like, the desertness is not the most interesting thing to look at. Yeah. But what I did like is that You're there staring were... staring at a brick wall there. That was <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, but what I did like is that there was tons of stuff within the space. Like Pete was saying, it was filled with lots of areas. And the, the thing that I guess we should there. say as well is that um, there's the world and then they, they also have those sort of like uh, tomb... Uh, vault, vaults? Hidden vault the things. Vaults of yeah. please. I've um, forgotten which one that is. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So we, yeah, so you can go, you find those and you can go under and, com and like, complete trials. At the end of the trials, you get, like, a Zeus power, power of lightning, power of something, and then you use that to upgrade. So we got the first trial. I love the idea of this because I think that the, I, I love this trial-based sort of thing. Mm. I loved it in Legend of Zelda, uh, in Breath of the Wild. I love it in this. I love it in all games. That Even do Skyrim kind of thing. had like caves that you would go into that were just like little one-off scenarios that you'd have one little sort of puzzle, in yeah, conflict, and then hop out of it. It like took you out of the hub world into a little. I love that too. I so I I think it's awesome. The one that we did in this to me felt like 
it was like designed for it was this designed demo. for this demo because <laughs> it was very much like a a tutorial of how to use the powers. So yes. I'm wondering if they took something from the because like we played halfway through the game or whatever, like we had a ton of the powers. Um, they they took something from early and put it here. I would hope they're not all like this throughout the game because that would be very basic um, but if they are more along the lines of like you know you've been leveling up your powers and knowing how to do things better and better and so over the course of the game there's all sorts of challenges this is the thing that like these are the map collectibles that I dig. I love going to these things and completing this one thing. Not like go here and pick this thing up. Go here yeah, and like do a even, cool objective. Even in Assassin's Creed, all of the like um, like uh, jumping puzzle tombs that you would go into, or the things that you would find to be able to unlock the special armor, like all of that stuff was what, the what Tomb Raider, hooked me so hard. The Tomb Raider tombs in the oh, new yeah, Tomb Raider yeah, games, yeah. where yeah. you're going through yeah. and like climbing up a ship that's hanging off the side of a thing. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. yeah, and like yeah, the puzzle stuff is always fun for unlocking things that maybe you don't need but are, are cool to collect throughout the game as Going well. Going like, through that process and they, they, yeah. it is satisfying. Yeah, yeah, but you're right as well. There's something like that is like uh, almost a, a bit of a momentary relief when you get overwhelmed by the larger world. To be able mm. to be taken out of that for a moment yeah. and just complete this isolated thing mm. makes you feel so good. Yeah. And, and we, yeah, these are the these are the deepest version of that. Yeah. But there's also stuff in the world like there's um, in this area we're in there's a giant harp. Oh, and, yeah. and that's like attached to a puzzle. I, I believe um, it's a liar. A li it was a liar. I do that. <laughs> Classic um, study staff is something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so, so there's a there's a puzzle built into to the area that you're in, as opposed to going to the dungeon to do the puzzle. It's like the space is just full of mystery. Um, so there was that, and there's also like like a puzzles attached to a mechanic as well like firing your the arrows we haven't seen yet but the, yeah and then yeah, like, and then there's yeah. even just little ones like this where you've just got basic timer puzzles which are just jump, jumping puzzles that use certain timed aspects of it stuff like that so yeah like they don't just have to be in the vault i think there's ones that are um more integrated with the actual world itself this is gus's favorite <laughs> thing about the game you have wings and there are vents that have air coming out <laughs> and if you like pull your wings out you float up i mean it's not my favorite thing about the game it was just the thing i know that everyone else struggles to read. <laughs> <laughs> that is some real backhand sass. Stick around, gosh. Game if game if you'll hear my you've, If you've <laughs> ever um, hated backseat gaming, backseat <laughs> gamer goose <laughs> what I love, something else. There was a moment there that you'll see as well when you're in the vault and you were moving through it and there was a little optional thing to the side and seeing that spark in you of like, I can't leave here until I've done everything and you're like, there's something behind that door. And it's like, yeah. but like for the sake of the demo, we don't need keep to going. You're like, what, what if, if I, I move? What if I, what what if I, and you just went to hardcore detective mode and you were like I must see what's behind this wall let me have fun the way oh, I totally. want to have fun no of course <laughs> Steph you and I have spoken about this I've made videos with these guys for a long time they don't want you to have fun when we record first place no. it is not a fun experience no. uh, my favourite part about the backseat gaming is you. we actually hear it you'll hear it in the video but the way Gus phrases it is the most pass ag oh, yeah. just totally. asshole way of doing it it's like um, maybe you uh, don't just look out stand the there hole. and do something yeah <laughs> look, out, look out at the hole. Uh, what's that thing over there? I don't know. Do you reckon that maybe that's a vent or something? I don't know. Maybe check it out. It's like, we get it, Angus. Thank you very much. To be fair, your character had been, like, adamantly staring at a brick wall, climbing yes. it. And okay. I had been also, chugging stamina potions like a mother. It is very different watching someone play a game 100%. than playing it yeah. yourself. Yeah. Like, there will be, like, giant blocks of text on a screen when I'm playing a game that I am just <laughs> blind. Yeah. Yeah. Because I am so focused on this thing over here. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> I was like, uh, one of th two things to be doing. One was to soar gracefully out over a canyon, or the other was to keep staring at a brown wall and be like, I can get through this. <laughs> someone watching it that has to maybe work at it, I'm I'm like, I'd much prefer you with Sawyer. Nick, <laughs> Nick got his back though because we played, Gus and I jumped in at the end of the record, so we were playing the same demo and you were given a bunch of potions and stuff at this for the character and yes. you chugged them all yep. by the time we got yep. in. We had no stamina <laughs> potions, no extra pomegranates to eat on, like yeah. none of that stuff. And yet the funniest part of the whole playthrough is Steph and I stuck in that wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, so the next question came in from Hugaholic who said, what do you think of the comparisons being made of Breath of the Wild's look and feel? Because it was kind of like, the two things spoken about this game. Number one, used to be called God's Monsters, then apparently Monster Energy <laughs> Drink got involved, and then we can't do that anymore. Insane. Amazing. And then number two is that it, it it does take a lot of inspiration from Breath of the Wild. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Angus, 
you're the art nerd here. Sure. You're the world design work nerd. I think what's interesting when you mentioned that redesign in terms of, uh, sorry, not redesign, but that change up from what we initially saw with the Gods and Monsters trailer at E3 quite a few years ago now. Yeah. Um, a big part of that was it looked a little more cartoony. It had a bit more of a, a softer look mm. to everything about it, um, which, look, I enjoyed, but I like where they've gone here as well. Um, and essentially, this was part of, obviously, Ubisoft uh, sort of had some checks and balances and said, we're going to take a little longer with some of our games, giving the team behind this a uh, sizable uh, extension on, on the work they were doing. And so uh, a lot of the developers and the art director has come out and said that they, they went back and sort of checked how the game was coming along and said what would we like to improve and they said both you know mechanically but visually there's so much more detail we can put into this world oh, really? so yeah that was a big part of what they said they went to uh, back to the drawing board or not quite back but they said let's have a bit of a redesign here so let's keep what everyone I think enjoys which is a very painterly almost sort of pastel watercolor look <laughs> which I think is you know it's it's very pleasing on the eyes and it plays very well into a stylized look um, but on top of that they have I think matured the look a little bit more so I think both in the main character of, uh, of Phoenix and a, a lot of the enemy types as well there's just that extra little bit of uh, detail I think is the best way to put it. Yeah I was yeah. going to say uh, uh, just uh, on this uh, mm. in the chat Confused Echidna said this doesn't look cartoony and then multiple question marks and I think that detail is the right thing because the initial version of the game had more of that sort of just like bold colours and less, yeah. less fine detail which just makes it feel more I would say kids cartoony than yeah. yeah. I mean yeah, yeah. It kind of looks almost like cell shaded in a way. There is definitely that like sort of more matte finish to a few of the the uh, especially some of the larger environments when you see sort of textures and stuff like that. It's a much more pleasing, simple palette. Mm -hmm. um, I really enjoy it. I think it, I think it works so well for what this is, which is heavily stylized. Um, if I skip ahead a little bit, just so we're not staring at this bit. Um, obviously, as we said, we're in a very brown area, but the, the, those really sort of like stunning vistas. I know you're a fan of those. <laughs> Um, and just sort of, a, it's a it's a simpler but bold colour palette they've gone through the whole thing. And as we said, distinguishing different areas, letting things like stamina and glowing blue orbs and stuff really stick out in a large world, stops it being muddy and messy. And yeah, I, I, I'm a fan. I think like comparisons to Breath of the Wild are just like a huge compliment, really, because it's just, mm. I think games inform other games. And if like if Breath of the Wild did something that was kind of unique and successful, it's exciting to be able to spawn other games that, you know, inf are informed by the same ideas and expand and take them to a new and exciting different place. Mm. So I think that's just like, it's just awesome because you'll see that happen so often within genres of games and it kind of opens up new kind of almost mini genres within genres. Mm. So I think like, yeah, I think it's great. And, and if anything, if, if anyone's kind of loved those games and this is just giving them something that's similar, but like mm. completely unique and, uh, and new in its own right. I think what's happening is people are, uh, are saying that there's a lot of similarities mechanically and that there's also art style wise to what Breath of the Wild did, which mm. also had that sort of uh, slightly self shaded simpler look mm -mm. but I would argue that's like the, the previous Zelda games had that look and you know that's a very Nintendo look in general so this is just I think more exciting to see someone like Ubisoft go for a, a, a heavily stylized look which as we know they usually stick to the ultra realistic and the heavily detailed and beautiful you know super realistic lighting so I think in terms of comparing the art styles it's not really fair to, to put them as close together as people are putting because as I said it's still cartoony it's still yeah. there's heaps of other games that do that look as well yeah Lucrea says it's Breath of the Wild meets Odyssey two of my absolute favorite games in recent years so that's yeah. yeah two good things combined mm. yeah and yeah totally and like I've been saying since we played this and like you know the reaction to it obviously like there's there is the immediate shorthand of being like oh that looks very similar to, to Breath of the Wild mm. and and there's a lot of like uh, negative kind of people bringing that up but where you see something like Mortal Shell and it's like that looks exactly like Dark Souls cool yeah and it's like yeah like <laughs> I'm totally down for, and yeah, we talked about it with Windbound as well. It's like, yeah, Windbound is like a literal homage to it, yeah. and people were super supportive of that in this whole development cycle. Mm. Um, so I think it's just one of those things that you know Ubisoft deals with is people saying like, oh, does every game they create have to break every bound? Uh, sorry, every uh, aspect of game design. It's like no, I think to to pull from some really positive aspects of something like Breath of the Wild is a is a totally fine thing to do and it's going to make for a great game hopefully. Uh, Phoenix Alliance says that the UI is very chunky. It is a chunky UI. There's a ton going on. I'm, I'm can, you sure. can you toggle it, I wonder? I'm sure you probably can 
do something. Um, <laughs> the uh, I, I don't. I also don't know. Like this is also a, a work, work in progress, so yeah. the, the, it might change. Um, we also jumped in halfway through. Like, um, you know, you're learning all the mechanics and everything as you go. So I don't know whether or not they've sort of highlighted things a little more to remind you of these features. Yeah, because you're not getting drip-fed that information. Yeah, it's yeah harder it to... kind of just goes. But, but yeah, I mean, it is it is definitely two big points on either side of the screen there that sort of break with the colour. The thing, I think the thing along the top is kind of essential when you're talking about a big open world game that you're flying around in. You kind of need that sort of directional meter thing. Yeah. But you could probably toggle this stuff off on the uh, side of. Look, another big thing apart, uh, uh, sorry, about the UI is the fact that you use, I've forgotten the name of it directly, but you kind of use a first person view to look out over the world and mark things on your map, um, which some would argue is a bit Assassin's creed in the sense that, you know, you get to look at everything you go to and you've mm. got uh, vaults and boss battles and harps and all those things to, to go towards. But I would say what we played and what we experienced, it definitely didn't feel as checklisty. It, de it didn't have that, like, these icons were glowing mm. around the map with indicators everywhere mm. for me to uh, interact with. If anything, it was that opposite of, like, there'd be a structure. And I'd be like, yeah. there's a giant scorpion that's been, uh, like, fossilized there. Mm. And I'm like, yeah. uh, in that case, it's right ahead. Yeah. And we went, let's check that out. And yeah, we totally. And under it, and there was a vault in it. And that wasn't glowing, pulsing, arrowing towards it. Anything that can sometimes be a bit sort of obnoxious. There's a, a kind of, um, what was that uh, mode you go into when you're, like, looking... Far sight. Far sight, yeah. Where you kind of, like... Are able to kind of zoom in on areas of the map and um, kind of identify points of interest and choose where you want to go next. So you can kind of like see that little scorpion and be like, is there something in there that I can go and investigate? Yeah. Like, is it worth me going all the way over to that side? And you'll get like a little bit of feedback from the controller that'll tell you, oh, there's something here that you can find. I think it was using uh, very similar to Assassin's Creed, which is you need to use those points of interest to look around and mark them all first. Is yeah, that how yeah, it vibrates yeah, yeah. and then says, yep, there's something there. Yeah. So if you just looked at it, uh, straight away you'd see nothing but it was up to you to point at landmarks. But it's very non-linear like you can yeah. you can really explore the sort of zones in the map at your own creative yeah. excitement. And it's one, it is one of the benefits of being a less realistic game in that it can go like they don't need to design Athens to look like Athens. Yeah. <laughs> where you can't see anything from the streets of Athens. Yeah. You can go to the top of a hill and you see a scorpion and a liar and <laughs> a forge and a whatever and you're like cool, I know that I can get to all those things. And yeah. they're just like, they're placed in, in unrealistic locations, but things that are really like enticing. And but, then, but then also serve as really helpful landmarks to help you orientate yourself when you're yeah. flying all the time. Like it's really useful to be able to get the lay of the land by being like, okay, it was left of Scorpion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the, the interesting thing, like uh, where I get um, fatigued in open world games, it happens in Assassin's Creed, it happens in most open world games for me, is when I'm trying to go, it's something to do with my personality, where I'm trying to go to the next quest objective, and as I go, things pop up and trigger around me, and so I get diverted off my path. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and I think that the thing that, the way that I didn't feel that in this, which I think is probably a good thing, because there's so much ver verticality, once you get those wings, which I, I don't think you start the game with, I think you need to complete the you have to goal. You have to earn them, Nick. Yeah, and so it's like Tom Cruise and Top Gun. Uh, <laughs> you've got to get the feathers. Yeah. <laughs> um, but because there's that verticality, it's like, oh, I can be here, I need to go over there. I'm just going to sort of leap and fly across there. Yeah. And if things pop as I go, it's it's only like a 20 second flyback if I'm interested in going exploring that rather than like a mm. one to four minute horse ride back to get there. Yeah. So I think that something like that is um, what I need in open world games to be able to direct path myself to these places. And, and that verticality just meant that, you know, with Gus's favorite wind vents and stuff, <laughs> you, you can get across that map pretty quickly. Uh, and so even if a bunch of stuff does trigger uh, when I was playing it I didn't feel the need to go tick that off in some sort of compulsive yeah. open world map ticky thing who knows if that'll be what it's like in the actual game but but for this at least yeah. I like the way it looks small when you're kind of looking down on it but then when you're in it it feels really large but not overwhelmingly so there's yeah. a kind of a weird perspective thing that happens yeah. um, well again we should add yeah there is uh, as well as using the wings there are uh, mounts that you can call Someone's on at any time to ride around on and then you can um, climb on basically every surface um, which again 
is a similarity uh, to Breath of the Wild, but using your stamina, you can climb on, I think, practically everything. So there's statues, there's cliff walls, mm. there's all that kind of stuff. So you're right, the traversal is actually rather quick once you get the hang of it. Um, and I think that'll make things feel large, but not be overwhelming, like you say. Yeah. Just yeah. quickly, the only other thing I wanted to mention in design-wise, I think they've done a really beautiful job with, is that uh, you would think that going with this kind of like Greek mythology, you've got a lot of, it's, it's not just based in rock and stone and wood and marble like it's it's what i really like about it is this area in particular the forge um there's a cool amount of like clever design that leans into things like uh the clockwork nature of the mm. uh in this case your horse and the mechanics that are moving around there the forge is vents and all that kind of stuff there is kind of this vents oh. again here he goes <laughs> oh, I love those vents but it's there is more than just your uh, you know, stone pillars and rock, rocky areas yeah. and statues. It's like yeah. they've been creative enough to use. This a lot is the one thing we found that you couldn't <laughs> climb. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were testing. <laughs> Corrugated iron. <laughs> you just can't get a grip. <laughs> but using that style guide and those stories and myths, they've gone. That's helped them expand the world uh, visually, what they can create and put in as well. So it's not all like it's not just awe inspiring. It's also kind of like it's it's clever that they've found design aspects of it as well that aren't just yeah. They've been super creative with their interpretation of, like, this, you know, mythical world. And that's yeah. why I think they've chosen... It's not like it's set in a specific part of Greece. It's this kind of mythical island um, where a you're kind of... of all the best parts of all the myths. Yeah, huh? yeah, which is why I feel like it, it does seem kind of theme parky because it really is the <laughs> greatest hits of all these kind of places that they've kind of shoved in to this mythical world that feels, like, so exciting to explore. Uh, so this would be a good point to talk about the combat since this was the big boss fight that we had had in the demo, mm. uh, Dr. Jerkberg. <laughs> Great name. Jerkberg. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, what influences you didn't did the spend, devs take? Uh, three years at medical school to be <laughs> Mr. Jerkberg. <laughs> three years? <laughs> That's, That's it. Probably. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, very clever. What influences did the devs take from their previous work on Assassin's Creed, etc.? And uh, th I mean, for me uh, and Pete, you're the you're the sort of like m most proficient combat person I suppose on the team when it comes to fighting but there was there was quite a bit of Assassin's Creed gameplay uh, when it came to combat and uh, and the weapons and stuff yeah um, like I think the f if you boil it down to like the the simplest mechanics because like it's it's not like Dark Souls because you have so many tools at your disposal yeah, yeah, like, yeah, totally. <laughs> you know like but it, it is a lock on uh, manage your stamina your your blue stamina there um, and combine combine light and heavy attacks and uh, and and watch for attack patterns it feels good it feels good, like the little mobs out in the world. This is obviously a boss fight where I might find you the mobs you were talking about. But well, yeah. we can stick on this for a little sure. while because yeah, the, the, like there's clear attack patterns here, and and boss and fights are fun to learn in that way. Mm. You know, you um you you guys got a first go. Uh, downed all the pots, but yeah. got a first go. But, well, but I, I, we got a first go. There was a lot of judgment from you two. We were doing that. A lot of behind those Jump stuff. over the fire beam. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, the battle here is an interesting one of like learning the attack patterns, managing your stamina, finding the pla the best places to attack from. Uh, there's a good dodge and roll mechanic, um, and yeah, and then so. You do have light attacks, you do have heavy attacks, and then you've got a massive arsenal of stuff, which obviously we've unlocked. Uh, but it just feels like you, you'll have reasonably limitless ways to play the style that you want to play. I think there'll be fights that require skills yeah. that um, you may not like to use, but, you know, like... Um, uh, there's like spears coming out of the ground. There's a massive hammer, which was Nick's favorite. Um, there's grapples, so you can get up to like the chest height of something this big mm. and maybe attack a weak spot up there. There's a really satisfying counter parry as well that feels yeah. like it has like weight and pushback to it, which I like. And yeah. one of the things they do is they have that little slowdown, I think, if you do a correct parry as well. Yeah. It's just that, that little tactile feel of the game slows down and gives you a chance to kind of just work yeah. out what you're going to do next. Clever resource asks what's the blue bar versus the red bar. Again, in boss fights, another cool mechanic that we've seen in a bunch of games, but it is fun to see in a more actiony, arcadey actiony RPG like this, is that the blue bar is their stamina, and you can attack it down, and you know that when that gets to zero, kind of like a Sekiro kind of fight, they're um, 
they're going to get staggered, and then you'll have opportunity to do some massive damage. Well, one of the things we worked out, not just in the boss fights, but when they are staggered, you suddenly get a chance to wail on your enemies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think if you correctly uh, take out all their health, which you'll see in the playback as well, it's a cool little flourish. Do you want to mention what it was the first time you guys did it to the enemy and sent them completely... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, that's the most <laughs> surprising part of this whole game. We should bring some of that footage up. I'll find that funny. while you mention yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. When you defeat an enemy in this game, it's like they get shot out of a cannon off into space. It's so funny. There's like a little <laughs> trail. Yeah. So that was a medium. I think one, the yeah. next one comes up. So those were just the little grunts you run into. But if you get, you know, a, a sort of semi-mini boss or some of the larger <laughs> characters like this, uh, I think this was like overweight Medusa bloke uh, who wants you. I think you got a stagger here as well. Um, maybe it's maybe it's you if you kill them at full stagger or something. Uh, Possibly, yeah. yeah. Because it is it like I think it's I think it's fun. It is a weird choice that <laughs> you, you you swipe someone so hard with your sword that they. They catapult <laughs> I, halfway I, I like it though. It feels like the, it's those moments that I feel like I'm, you know, using the power of the gods. Yeah. You know, this is not like <laughs> yeah, a regular sword strike. I think right. so you get a parry here, which shows that you get a nice little... Yeah, that's yeah, it's so, sa so satisfying. It says uh, Team Rocket blasting off again, and that's absolutely <laughs> yeah. what it is. It's, so it's then like, so yeah, down. big hits, big hits. And then it just... And it shoots off. Oh. <laughs> and, and they were never seen again. <laughs> in that, in that start, which I hadn't noticed when we played. It's flies up in the air and then a rocket initiate. <laughs> totally. It's like it's like they give you enough time to look at it. Yeah. Because yeah. they know what they've done is super fun. So it's like, <laughs> have a look. Have yeah. a, here it goes. But if, yeah. If someone who did their research and watched Hercules, it's those things where you punch them out of their sandals and they just yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Away. Yeah. I, li I like that that Hephaestus's hammer <laughs> move is really cool too. And we were talking about the fact that the the hammer isn't something that's like realized on Phoenix's you know, back or anything. Mm. But um, it's like a. a uh, yeah, it's like an It's a metaphorical hammer. energy hammer that oh. just like oh. appears. Oh. Oh. The quarterback is toast. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also really like those like um, spear spikes that come out of the ground. That was a really cool Daddy's move home. as well. <laughs> well, that's like showing that there's a mix up between like a heavy direct attack and there's also like an AOE. An AOE, yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. Like that. Yeah. So I, I don't know if we did we totally use all of the abilities in the demo. I think. I think uh, we mostly used Daddy's home. Which is what <laughs> yeah, that one became. Yeah, we used that one. Became. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that in the hammer, and the um, hammer a lot. Uh, because there's a charge. I like the rock throw as well. So yeah, again, part part of the here it is. Part of the um, combat Blech. system that is like <laughs> w when I say stamina, that stamina exists. That, that blue, those blue bars that are often next to your character, they kind of work for two purposes. They work as like your mana pool and your stamina mm. is how I read it. Um, it's your stamina when you're flying, it's your stamina when you're climbing. Yeah, that's a very but good But when you're using your hammer, you use a chunk of it. Yeah. And it's like, that's like you're accessing powerful attacks by using your mana pool to do that. So mm -hmm. your hammer does a lot. The um, spears from the ground actually takes a chunk out as well. So it's like, and here you are with no mana. Um, so it's like, or stamina. Uh, so it's actually Let's just like, call it blue. Yeah, you run yeah. out of blue. <laughs> yeah, blue energy. Uh, so the blue is like a thing that you manage in the fight, not because you necessarily will get staggered. We didn't encounter that. Maybe that does happen. Uh, but the blue is really useful for taking advantage of uh, those opportunities when you've staggered the enemy mm -hmm. and just yeah. pump out a bunch of damage really quickly because it does recover when you stop using it, um, I believe. But, yeah, but no. maybe not in combat quickly. Uh, it's it's, it happens slowly. I, I think it, maybe it happened slowly in the world as well, but I yep. didn't use it too much. Like I only used it to climb and fly. Like I think world, so. I think when we see get you get to the top here, it's, it comes back reasonably quickly when yeah, it's, oh, it's slower than that in combat. And then it's yeah, slower sure. in combat. Yeah. Um, and then the, you've got uh, in the in the the big the big overlay that we've spoken about <laughs> on the bottom left. You can see the pots there. So I think I only have one there. But next to that, the smaller blue icon is these blue mushrooms, which you can eat to get a tiny bit of blue back or you there are crafting like cauldrons you can distill the them into a six stamina potion yeah, yeah she makes herself a blue beer and <laughs> uh, the pomegranates and the health potions isn't it so yes. there's like a there's a smaller version like, oh well the pomegranates I, uh, yes uh, I think the pomegranates though are the purple thing no they were red no, yeah, they, they were, were red they were the health yeah right okay yeah. and the purple thing I think is attack damage and so it's, yeah. it's kind of like you got classic, other buffs you can the use. classic buffs that you have but yep. you can you can consume them as a smaller 
mount if you're in a panic or you can yeah put them into <laughs> we a also we haven't talked about phoenix has a bird companion as well that you can also command to like fight for you and stuff like that i did not it? use that we, i know like i was overwhelmed with the Think, amount of oh. the only time i used it was accidentally <laughs> i once. Yeah, i was yeah. just very overwhelmed with the amount of <laughs> amount of things that i had at well, my disposal yeah because we started the game sort of at a halfway point rather than picking up those skills slowly so it was a lot to get ahead around but yeah. but but um i'm excited i always love having some kind of companion in a game like this it always makes me feel like let me see yeah. safe You've and got, happy we saw in this like the dash and there was a like ground pound kind mm -hmm. of thing as well like there is really good mobility options i th i i think just uh, again i haven't played an, enough of it really to get a feel for what it's gonna be like in all the fights but it feels like you've got the ability to, and this is a dungeon that we crawled, we went into, which is like a, um, just a combat based one as opposed to a puzzle one. Oh, so it's like I didn't see that you did uh, this. Okay, yeah, cool. So it's just like a um, combat challenge yeah. opposed mm. to a puzzle challenge. And it ratcheted it up it <laughs> did, it did quite quickly. He finally got it. He's like, I got this. I got this. And yeah, then like I finally see understand. once you clear this wave, it just goes next wave. I think actually you oh, might, wow. on, you might've turned on a modifier. Um, yeah, I did. I pulled a lever and and big bad things came. And so yeah, like flicking things can, up in the air. Are you able to use attack, like, like the environment to help you that take chart. out enemies there? Is it like the, yeah, like, the, the, the spikes the spikes. I think they trigger on you and maybe you could. Okay. That was, I mean, that's using the environment there by charging that dude off the cliff. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, it does feel like there's going to be, uh, and again, I hate to bring up Zelda again, but like, you know, the, the, the clips that got shared post launch of people going like, I worked out how to use the mechanic in a way that the developers didn't know yeah, how it worked. Right. Yeah. I feel like the combat is, is actually really clever in this. There's the spike trap thing. Yeah. The, there's mm -hmm. enough stuff in it that people are going to find some fun ways to, and then maybe even just like cheese bosses and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. But, <laughs> I think that the, um, the uh, uh, like, and again, we only played a small amount. There's definitely an emphasis on discovery because there's a ton of stuff in the environment. Like if you if you think about something like it falls somewhere between an Assassin's Creed and a uh, Breath of the Wild in terms of things on the map for you to go and pursue. Um, but where Zelda had an emphasis on discovery and wandering around right. environments and finding secrets like this, I think that this game more is like, we'll show you where these secrets are and it's more about going there and having your five second of fun loop what, when you're there. And mm. I think that, that it's much more combat focused than, than, uh, other totally, than totally. Zelda. Um, so that it is that thing of like, as you, as you put together new ways of doing combos, like I'm sure that even though I was relatively overwhelmed at the beginning with all these yeah. things, like it makes Whoops. sense. You can oh, pick it up. <laughs> um, but uh, but as you as you work yourself into place, oh wow! Just a yeah. minute. <laughs> one minotaur and you go. <laughs> as you work yourself into a play style, then you're going to find the, the the sort of like ways to experiment using all those things, which I, yeah. which I think is really cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I guess we should point out as well um, that. Someone asked earlier, is there weapon um, durability in this? Yeah. There's not, thankfully. Yeah. Um, that's the one thing I, I hate. Um, this is built more around RPG mechanics, so putting skill points into Phoenix mm. uh, and also uh, finding gear that Steph will find all of the gear because she'll do all the puzzles. <laughs> Absolutely. Find, like, finding gear and wearing sets that boost particular stats so again yeah. you'll you'll end up wearing a the armor sets are really cool that yeah, like neon like really crazy the cool like rave one i really like yeah yeah um uh, yeah so yeah you you'll be able to equip a set that suits your play style as opposed to necessarily like finding a weapon that is going to keep breaking on you yeah and it especially makes sense from like a lore perspective as well though because these are items and weapons that you find that are you know uh, tied to certain gods and characters so it would be weird if you got like Hephaestus's hammer and you had to keep repairing it all the time <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> and actually like uh, a legendary weapon craftsman, <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, and over the last few days we've said it a ton you just can't not say it in the two comparisons of Assassin's Creed and Breath of the Wild I think I definitely get the Breath of the Wild thing. The Assassin's Creed thing, I think that's coming because it's Greek and it's um, open world, Ubisoft. The the th the thing that I got more vibes for, for is uh, original 
original uh, God of War. Oh, okay. Because yeah. When it comes to mm. combat, the combat, because combat, yeah, yeah. Is I got like, a lot of mechanic and yeah. thing going mm. on there too. I think even there's those lights and heavies. When I got into it, one thing I didn't realize while you played it was that you know light light. Oh, sorry, light light heavy light attack. It gets you a little combo, and you go right. I like that one, but I also like heavy heavy light heavy, and it would do mm. a few different sort of combinations. You mix that with, as you said, some of the juggling stuff. That we yeah, do. because the, I I started playing. Uh, like ground based as in like Assassin's Creed style because that's I'm like okay this is that thing from the mm. and and you're it's it's totally serviceable but it was it wasn't until we got to that boss battle and there was that moment in it where we're like halfway through and it was like oh we're so not going to beat this because we don't have enough stamina potions and this dude has still has three quarters of the health and then there was one moment where I jumped up in the air and then I did three combos and I smashed him down by two thirds of his health yeah y using the verticality is a big part of it also that thing where she kind of like you uses a, a... Yeah, like the God of War the book <laughs> thing. Yeah. No, it's, it's the braces she's wearing. They're the braces of Heracles. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forget, they're all someone's, uh, but those are an actual upgrade, I believe, which give you the ability to throw things and also to... Like uh, latch onto to the, latch on the, the, the sort of like larger points from enemies and sort of and gives you that little moment of hover in front of them where you can I think yeah, yeah try and use that moment yeah. of attack above there so yeah so I did really like that combat and I think that 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 is it's it's very uh, arcadey I guess mm -hmm. but it takes no, you away from those comparisons to Assassin's Creed I think where it is all like yeah shield parry block stay on the ground it's exactly like, yeah. if I choose to float around three enemies and maybe l combo the actual attacks then yeah it's it's going to feel far different to something more grounded. Pete made a little face at me. He wasn't flirting with me. There was a movement in one of the lights, and I freaked the, uh, out. The it's just a let's let's talk about tape for a moment. No, shall we? no. <laughs> so there's a little bit of camera tape holding a bit of diffusion to the light up there, and the uh, adhesive of the camera tape, which isn't very strong, and that's the point of camera tape. Uh, it did get hot enough on the lamp for the adhesive to melt enough for the diffusion to slip a little bit, and that's what we reacted to. The man loves tape talk. <laughs> you have no he idea. Does. You have no idea. He's asking me to make a graphic for Pete's tape talk session. <laughs> <laughs> we should have. We should make a pockety who's like wrapped up in gaffer tape. Oh, that's gonna look kinky though. No, not kinky. Yeah. Like he got stuck. Oh. Like oh, okay. there was too much, and he's like all tangled up. He's all tangled up in the gaff. Um, uh, okay, and then the last thing, the last thing I wanted to touch on, and this is purely, <laughs> this is from the, a question. Almost just for me, BRB Cycling asked, as a dad gamer, is there something us dads can dip? Is this something us dads can dip in and out of? Twenty minutes here, twenty minutes there. Uh, does it have a pause? Are there simple mechanics? Are the menus intuitive and, navig and navigable? Uh, can you look after my children? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even want to play games. I just want to sleep. Um, but uh, yes, and that and that for me is the thing because the the biggest surprise I got from this is we're playing the game and there was like a sort of like info video of like. This is what you're about to see, and here's a brief overview of the controls. And it says, it said the release date, and it was like, here's the platforms on. And I'm like, Switch. Mm. This is a Switch game as well. And that I feel like the game is built around the idea of bite size encounters. And that, and again, it is less of that thing of like, is the cool live, like that sort of wide RPG feeling thing where if you put it down for a week and you come back and you're like, what was I doing? Where was I going? I feel like this has just uh, lots of constantly completable loops mm. and then the loops get bigger and bigger. So whether it's the engaging the small mobs there, something, there's that harp challenge that Pete was talking about earlier, which seems like, like liar. A, sorry, liar challenge. Liar. I saw the look. Um, uh, this seems to be much more like a world based puzzle and broader. There are things hidden around. We didn't quite understand it, but it looks like there's things hidden around the area that notes that you collect and then play on the harp. Mm. But there's, there's like, yeah, those, those loops sort of circle out and get bigger and bigger. So there's always something to do in a short amount of time and then you add in those vaults and I'm like, yes, this is why for me this game is how I, ho I mean, hopefully this is the kind of game that I like in terms of RPGs of just being able to dip in and out, do what I want. And also that a lot of those little activities, I, I say activities, they are the main core of the game, I think a large part of it, is because of this mythical setting, because of this stylized nature of it all, they can be a bit more fun than your fetch quests in Assassin's Creed or your go and look for someone, like a, a bit more of a realistic task that might be a side quest here they all seem to be based around something that is has gratification associated has with it. whimsy has yeah has whimsy but also is like uh, a fight dungeon uh is great fun a platforming challenge using your wings and those 
those vents. Uh, those, and he would he would tape up those vents in a heartbeat. <laughs> and you know things like the heart challenge. They have a little more gratification, so they are easier to do in bite-sized sessions and give you, uh, as you said, that instant feedback um, to then put it down and come back to it another time. So I think more so than you would break off challenges in a in a more serious game. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, nothing to do with the game, but BRB Cycling popped up in the chat and said, new segment, The Woodsman Mansplains. <laughs> and I think technically he wasn't mansplaining, but he is yep. a man and he was explaining. That's so true. I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we maybe we should have said this at the beginning, but we'll save it for the end. Mm. What do we actually think? Like, because... Uh, I have, I have like opinions. Yeah, but uh, I'll start with you, Gus. Like, sure. Wh what was your takeaway from this? Um, my takeaway was that there is a lot more to this game than I suspected in mm. terms of variation of playstyles. Um, I know that sounds a bit generic, but it's essentially I thought this was going to be. Uh, a, an open world where you tick things off a map by doing quests. I didn't think the combat was going to be anywhere near as complex as it feels um, and I didn't think that the story was going to be as uh, I think the best way to put it is just like there is that whimsy, there is that fun, playful nature to it um, I thought they might have just said, hey let's transfer the Greek gods into an adventure setting, mm -hmm. but they've done it with a bit more panache um, and so in that sense I'm really looking forward to this as I think like you said a bit of a time killer mm -hmm. I, I want a large open world that I will keep coming back to but I don't want to sit I don't think I want to sit down and, and get through this game in a week and a weekend kind of thing mm -hmm. I, I want to mm -hmm. let this stretch out I want this game to, to nurse this thing for a couple of months um, and maybe never finish it the complete way but just keep coming back to it yeah, right. it, it has that fun open world element to it that um, I, look I was concerned at the beginning it might be a bit more straight uh, forward. Yeah, I was kind of at first like thrown by the kind of um, the cartoony, uh, I suppose, aspect of it. It didn't seem like it was as a mature, complex game as it has turned out to be. Um, so I'm really pleasantly surprised like that because I love open world, I love mythology, I love puzzles and adventure. Um, so I'm really looking forward to kind of exploring all of that. And as you said, I like that it doesn't take itself too seriously because there's that kind of playfulness and humour in there as well. Well, I never played um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It just didn't quite tickle my fancy I thought it did it's look like a bit literally one of the best assassin's creed <laughs> games it, it ever is made. it's like, like black wrong. flag and that are the two yeah. 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 but honestly just came in a time that I thought it just didn't look playful enough it didn't look fun yeah. enough it looked a little too serious which the assassin's creed it's Freak really cool are. and the, and also sure, like the female character be, model is like so much better this can be my this, this is the version of that that I think I wanted to play yeah Sorry, fair yeah. yeah 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 nice Pedicles. Uh Yeah, I think again, we were all just kind of surprised. Cause Peteous. Peteous. Peteous, sorry. We just didn't know really what was coming. Um, what a nice surprise it was. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, like, I'm excited that there's so much game. I kind of thought based on the Gods and Monsters trailer that this would be a small thing. Like my, my mind immediately went to like a, a couple of little indie titles that look beautiful and we're going to be more of like, Let's go for a nice stroll in a Greek field and look at the be the beauty of this like art that we made, it's as opposed to combat. Mm. You know, this is so this is so much deeper than I thought it would be in every part of the game. Mm. Really cool writing, like fun writing, heaps of depth in the combat. The world seems to be freaking huge. And I saw someone say, very brown. Yes, we only got to play in the brown, the brown zone. zone. Yeah. <laughs> there are seven zones and they're not all brown. Um, There's a purple one and a green one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would describe this as the golden zone. Nice. Sure. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like, it, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to syncing what feels like it's going to be like a probably 50 hour to 60 hour kind of experience. Mm. We don't know that for sure. I'm just pulling a number out of my butt, but... Um, out of your butt. I went for butt over ass. Yeah, right. That was now a decision I made during the sentence, and I was like, I would usually say out of my ass. Yeah. But it felt because it's a sponsored stream that I shouldn't say ass. And now <laughs> I said ass so many times. <laughs> Opposite, because to me, out of out of the ass is like an Australian colloquialism. Oh, and to but me, then it's like, when you said you but, you made it anatomical. Yeah, when yeah, you yeah, said yeah, but, yeah, I yeah. actually <laughs> thought of like spreading tight little apple cheeks and just like. 
like there was a popping noise and I was like, that's a very strange sort of... That's weird, but a cool like window into how your mind works yeah. visually. Yeah. And, <laughs> and thank you for describing my butt as tight. <laughs> <laughs> I Obviously, I'll uh, handle it back to you with that. But the only other thing I wanted to add is this feels like Ubisoft doing large worlds full of activities right in my mind <laughs> so that's something that has i've always had a bit of a gripe with i feel like i need to throw in a, not a negative but it's something that i feel overwhelmed all the time with their that's games right. yeah I, I look at their sub menus that have here's the list of everything you need to do i look at the maps i look at the icons and i do have that fatigue that comes across and it really feels like that's something that they've given an overhaul with this game they haven't simplified it they've just made it i think more approachable less overwhelming and more enticing um i think that's what we all got from when we looked at the map it's like i want to go to all these little places if anything, the fatigue will come from, not fatigue, but the stress will come from which one do I feel like doing right now? Mm. And that's a really positive thing in a game, especially an open world game. Yeah. yeah, I'll be interested to see what all the side activities are because there weren't too many within this where I was like, oh, this just feels like go here, collect this five parts of a map to make a map and then you know, congratulations. Mm. You, you're like, and, and, and also it didn't seem, and I can't confirm this, it didn't seem like it has quest givers. Right. Like you wander somewhere and someone's like, I need no. you to go get this thing for me, which I think is something else that fatigues me in open world games where yeah. it's like, go here to like, I, like that's, oh my God, I'm having a revelation uh. on camera. <laughs> the thing that fucking shits me so much with this is when you see an icon on a map and it's like someone is here and I go there and then that person is like, Hi, I'm really glad you came. I need you to go back exactly where you were <laughs> and collect five pelts. And then I need you to come back here. Yeah. And then I'm like, all right. So then I go and I come back and they're like, cool. Now, see that one over there? So, whereas, and that might happen here. And if it does, then I'm in my own words. And well, all right, we're going to have another conversation. But we kind of pinged on the far side thing. Pop, pop, pop. Here's locations of interest. And then you go there and you immediately start doing the activity at yeah. the place. Yeah, and I no. think that removing travel time in the same way that I like the fact that you can fly, once you get those wings, you can fly most places as opposed to like trek across the mountains. Then suddenly travel time condensed means close the loop on the fun and then Nick gets the 20 minutes when the kids are just not just hammering hammering at machines uh, to be able to actually get some game done as opposed to yeah. travel somewhere and be excited that that's going to yeah. happen next. And the, the drop of, uh, of story mission, the, the stuff that was obviously going to drive the campaign was Zeus and Prometheus talking to you on comms, on hand radio. <laughs> <Totally. laughs> well, <laughs> well, also, Hermes is yeah, kind yeah. of like your one quest giver uh -huh. who sends you, who gives you the quest of like save the gods yeah, and then. Yeah, play this game. Yeah. That's yeah. The quest. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, uh, like I will just join the Greek chorus of uh, being very surprised by this. I was expecting, uh, yeah, Pete, I was, um, I was potentially with you when it comes to the, maybe this is a small sort of like. Um, arty minimalist game or something uh, when and then when it was like oh it's this RPG blah 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 I was like oh okay maybe maybe this is not for me because I've just been I've been going off those more and more but when I was playing this I was like oh I'm constantly having fun I keep thinking about wanting to play it so yeah I was I was actually really really surprised how this is hopefully obviously this was just a vertical slice so you know mm. They could have put all the good bits in this part and then the rest of it is just <laughs> walking to different places and someone going, I need you to go back there. <laughs> um, but, uh, but if it's not, then I feel like this is something that I, yeah, I, I'm really, really keen. And what we're seeing now is me getting my butt or ass handed to me by the three-headed dog Cerberus, uh, which, yeah, I was uh, very defeated by. I want, back. I want to go back and beat it. Uh, so that is the talkback for Immortals uh, Phoenix Rising. Oh, the last thing I had. Oh, uh, you had another revelation. I did. Oh. Well, today when I was writing Phoenix Rising in the thing, I was like, yeah, that's a weird way to spell Phoenix. And I think I know why it's spelt this way. Mm -hmm. Please it's tell us, because Phoenix O'Lion has been mad okay, for cool. a long time. <laughs> of course. So I think the reason it's spelt like this mm. is... The same as the Monster Energy thing, in that <laughs> there is a very famous video game attorney called Phoenix, mm -hmm. and so they're like, mm -hmm. well, we don't want Phoenix. And then I was like, well, you could spell it F E N I X, and because then instead it's the, it's got the Y in it. Mm. And I was like, why they put? The? And then I went, oh my god. Marcus Phoenix. <laughs> His last name, the, he took the E N I X. Uh, so they uh, were left with the Y. So that's how they. And, in, and I went, I can identify with this because when I was a kid and I started kindergarten, 
we walked in there on the first day and there was a place to hang all of our big, big backpacks that you topple over when you put it on and those big broad hats and there was uh, the other kids, some of the kids were already there and there was a name plate where your mum could, my mum could write a thing and st a sticker and put my name up there and there was a Nicholas and there was a Nick N-I-C-K and there was an N-I-C Nick and it was like, well, and one of the Nicks, N-I-C-K, Nick Reese. Nick R. And so my mum was like, I don't know, how are you going to know which one's yours? Welcome to H-Land, motherfucker! Uh, and then that's how I got my name. So there you go. Hey, that's niche the boy. Of Nick niche, niche boy. Niche boy. Niche back. Uh, so there you go. That was a very weird end to this uh, talk back about a very specific game. Uh, now, thank you very much everyone for hanging out and watching. If you have more questions, toss them in the Discord and we'll answer them over the next coming days because uh, we've got a bunch of stuff that we didn't talk about here. So if if you have more that you're curious about, let us know. Now, if you're watching the stream live, you're about to see the playback of Steph and I playing uh, this game. If you're watching on YouTube, then it's its own video. So just go back to the YouTube channel and uh, and find that playback there. Uh, I'll be hanging out in the chat, though, anyway, during this uh, thing. So uh, keep chatting. Keep chatting. Keep chatting. <laughs> and it is very watching. important to remember that while you're watching this playback, you have to keep in mind that the entire time, Steph and I are having fun despite the best intentions of the two people behind the scenes who are so surly that we <laughs> dare do anything that could create some kind of fun content. Fun doesn't just happen when you tell people what to do. Fun it doesn't happens happen when you stand in front of a wall. It happens oh. organically. You can't get through, through that wall. That's through all hijinks let's and witty on, banter. Let's go out on a high note. Yeah, I let's, love all, let's all spread our wings, hop on a vent, and go out on a high note. I loved this game until it cancelled back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy.